Did you know that AT&T has a branding song based on its little brand? It's kind of weird. Boom, boom, boom. And it's kind of upbeat. Makes you kind of happy. You're thinking, AT&T, what a great company. Mm -hmm. Welcome to the Sunday Night Blue Light Special. My name is Dave Lieber, and tonight's subject is uh, the bane of my existence. AT&T. I've been doing this job now since 2005, and the thing that drives me absolutely insane is every single day it seems I get a complaint about AT&T, and it's been going on for 13 years. Uh, you know, I brought my file box to show you. This is just the recent stuff, and it's heavy. It's just filled with hundreds and hundreds and hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of stories from people that all want help with the company. And it's been going on, as I say, for 13 years. I guess out of all the stories I've done lately, the one that really sticks in my mind is the mom who was uh, in uh, going into labor in the hospital. And before she went into labor, while she was waiting, um, she was on the phone with AT&T customer service. And her mom took this picture. And I remember writing a story about this in the Dallas Morning News because I write the watchdog column in the Dallas Morning News at dallasnews.com slash watchdog. And after I was able to help her fix her problem, she sent me a picture of her newborn baby, Noah, and he was wearing the watchdog shirt that she had made for him. I thought that was pretty cool. <laughs> um, today's column at dallasnews.com slash watchdog and also in the Dallas Morning News is about AT&T. And I gave a job evaluation to the chairman, president, and CEO of the company named Randall Stevenson. Um, because I, he's, when you have chairman, president, and CEO, who gives you your job review? Who? Who's above you? God. And, and maybe me. Um, I, was, I, I, I get so frustrated at AT&T that I started a hashtag a while ago called Shame AT&T. And I put that with most of my stories on Twitter. Um, and after I, after I uh, created that hashtag, I got a call from Mr. Stevenson, the chairman, president, and CEO of AT&T. I call him the Big Kahuna. He invited me into his office to talk about customer service. And this is a selfie that I took of the two of us with my AT&T phone that we're talking to now. So this has been going on with AT&T for a very long time for me. I send them reports every month. And the thing that really kind of upset me, though, was when they got their Time Warner deal passed because my attitude was, if you can't handle, you know, that little bit of company that you've got over here, how are you going to handle that big monstrosity that you're building over here and putting it together? Because you guys really don't really know what you're doing. AT&T, if you're listening, Customer service has been bad and probably will continue to be bad because it is not the priority that making money is. You know, I miss my baby bells. And this really hit home a couple of weeks ago on October 15th when there was a fire in this building in Richardson, Texas, an AT&T data center. And it only took two fire extinguishers, the, the, the fire chief told me, to put it out. But it knocked out AT&T's service for thousands of customers for a half a day or more. Okay, that's not the end of the world, but when that happens and you're the communications company of the world, you must communicate to your people and that did not happen in AT&T. I made a little collage of all the headlines that I had collected from that story and that the, the they they didn't put out information. You go to their Twitter feed, you go to their uh, news page on AT&T.com, whatever. There was no information from them about what was the true cause. What Because they said first it was lightning, and then they changed their story to just a fire. And then when is the service going to be restored, and how many people are affected? They just didn't deal with that. And, and that's not a way to run a railroad, right, or a monopoly. So I use that as an example to give Mr. Stevenson a job review today, and I don't think he was probably happy to have a little snot-nosed newspaper columnist like me you know, tell him how he could improve on his job. But I did make some recommendations, and one of them was that he should check with Encore Electric Delivery because they do a fantastic job in outages. Uh, my friends who are subscribed to the Encore alerts tell me that when they're at work, they'll get an alert on their phone that their power is out, and they didn't even know it, but Encore tells them when they expect it to come back and maybe even the reason. But when AT&T had this problem on October 15th and there was supposedly lightning, people who live around there told me there was no lightning. After my story came out in the newspaper today, I heard from a, a few people with some very interesting thoughts. Um, but one of them was a fellow named DB. I'll protect his identity because you can actually, hi Jessamy, 
you can actually protect, um, people can write to me without having their, their thoughts exposed. But DV says to me that my story today, the evaluation of Mr. Stevenson only hit half the target because um, basically he said they don't have a redundancy backup plan for the Metroplex. Um, and do they even have one? If this had been a truly catastrophic event, such as an F5 tornado or a Hurricane Harvey, and that building were wiped out, where would customers be left when the ability to communicate would be gone? If they have one, how much time would have, they have to pass before it's put into effect? Thank goodness I didn't fall into the trap of bundling my internet with cell phone service, or we would have been truly blind, and the little informational tweets of the world would have never made it to me or others that needed information. So what does the big kahuna of huge concentration company, communication company, have to say about the integrity and redundancy of their communications infrastructure? Well, I think we know. This little building here in, in Richardson, Texas, had a fire that was put out by two fire extinguishers. It was a wire fire caused by the power line coming into the, into the building, maybe because of leak, storm, leaking from storms. And we were out of service for 12 hours and the company doesn't tell anybody anything. These are all the stories that I get from hundreds of people about AT&T. If I never hear a word about them again, I will be glad because I get it in the morning, I get it at night, I hear it. When this fire thing happened, people were calling me and asking me what happened. I sent a message to AT&T and never heard back. I am an AT&T customer. You are listening to me now on my AT&T phone. The service here was very good, but when I was in Seattle, it wasn't very good. And when I was in Dallas today, even just a couple of blocks away from AT&T World Headquarters, it wasn't very good. This is one of the most powerful companies in the world. The federal government did stand up to it and try and block the merger in a trial. I think that happened because President Trump was upset because Mr. Stevenson wouldn't sell CNN. That's my personal opinion. After the government, the federal government lost the case and AT&T merged with Time Warner and became Warner Media, now the federal government said it's appealing. That decision will come sometime soon. If you ever have a problem with AT&T that you can't solve, you let me know. You can write to me at watchdog at dallasnews.com. And I promise that I will send it to the CEO in my monthly report. They told me that this was the phone number for you to call. Hi, Robin Brown. They told me this is the phone number for you to call. And um, it's 1-800-288-2020. And um, this is the number to call for a refund. I'm sorry, I'm reading the comments. Uh, um, this is the number to call for a refund if you had lost service that day. The only problem with this is if you call, you'll be on the phone for 15 minutes or 20 minutes on hold and then talk to somebody and they might give you a half a day refund which would basically work out to maybe $1.50 and then they'll try and sell you all kinds of crap you don't want. So, my name's Dave Lieber and I'm the watchdog at the Dallas Morning News and every Sunday night I get together here in my blue light special with you and talk about things that matter to me and I hope matter to you. I'll see you next Sunday night, hopefully. Watchdog. Bam.